Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's part 112 today and we are back for crunch time. It is Juventus v Real Betis in the final group stage match in the Champions League and only a win guarantees us qualification. It's in our hands, the most we can get is 8 points, it's remarkable really, but we could yet get through with a draw and based on our performances so far, we've won one game, drawn two and lost two. I wouldn't be banking on a victory just yet. We'll follow that up with a home match against Udinese as we continue to stutter our way over the line in Syria. So if you're looking forward to seeing all of that, please do chuck a thumbs up on it. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 videos from two long-term stories. You can catch up with all the Euros-based playlists in the eye above, as well as the live stream watch-alongs down in the description below. There's a link to the Twitch channel there. And I'd really appreciate it if you could follow me over there and come and get involved in the fun. So we've been having a great time this week and I can't thank you all enough for your support. But the big news today is that we have to get a result against Pep Guardiola's Real Betis. We came up against them last year when we were at Real Madrid. They were a little bit of a thorn in our side, particularly in the first encounter at the start of the season. And today I'm not expecting anything different. You can see the one game we've played off camera, which was a 1-0 win away at Cagliari. It was Popov who got the winner late on, as he so often pops up with. And to be fair, aside from that, we were pretty average. We did rotate a bit though, so we've got fresh legs for today. So there's not a lot we can really build up to here. We can talk about all the games and all the excitement, but the main thing is we have to get a result. So there is no point delaying the proceedings. It is Bayer Leverkusen v Manchester United. It is Juventus v Real Betis. If United avoid defeat against Bayer Leverkusen, a draw is enough for us. If Bayer Leverkusen win, we have to match it. If we lose, of course, Real Betis leapfrog us. And then we're hoping United win to get third. Or we could crash out of Europe altogether. It could be a fascinating day. We could finish second, third or fourth and be in the Champions League, the Europa League or completely out of Europe in a matter of about 10 minutes time. So let's go and get into it. There's a few games in Serie A taking place. None of them really affecting the sides in our level. But let's see what our eleven is for today's game. I've picked what I think is our strongest team and we'll see if it's enough to get us through. So the one change I've made based on the performances against United is I've taken Cesar out for eight Nori, someone who's been here longer at left back but also significantly more experienced. The rest of the team though is as strong as can be. We've got Anana in goal, Simois and eight Nori the fullbacks with Marcelo alongside the league at centre half. Again, if the experienced Tommy Asu had been fully fit, maybe we'd have brought him in. But Marcelo for now is physically imposing. He's been pretty strong in the league games. I just need him to deliver in Europe because he had two horror shows against United and was really good elsewhere. The rest of the team know Shep Roma, Tonali, Popov, the goal scorer at the weekend, Balde and back are the midfield five. And then Bongioni's up front on his own. But who's going to be the hero? Let's go and get into it. It's Real Betis visiting Juventus. And anything other than a defeat gives us a chance of staying in Europe after Christmas. Let's go and see if we can do it. Well, a few familiar names, actually. Aside from Guardiola, the manager, Rocky Bashiri at right back. Wasn't Norwich last year in real life and in FM. Liam Delap, a young City striker, follow Pep over across to Spain. I don't recognise anyone else out of the starting eleven other than coming up against them last year. It looks like most of that experience is gone, so perhaps a younger team for Real Betis. So we're going to get the boys to prove a point. We're going to get motivated. We're going to do our best. And hopefully, just hopefully, we have a positive result. The United game is the only home match we've lost this season. But we have had a few disappointing draws. We have struggled at times to break teams down. And we just want to avoid that today. It's showing the latest scores from Syria. And I'm not quite sure why. Because the only game we're interested in is Bayer Leverkusen v Man United. As we've got a throw on the left. Ain't Nori and Tonali playing one-twos. Into Bongioni. What a save. I thought it was in. The keeper tipped it onto the bar. It was an incredible stop. And we're back again on the left with back. It's into the box to Bongioni. And he's held on to this one, Danny Martin. What a bit of goalkeeping he's produced in the first 10 minutes. And that bit wasn't bad to either, to be fair. As Garcia gives it to Redondo on the left. The first chance we're seeing the visitors come forward. And we know Pep's side are always going to keep possession well. They're always going to move the ball forward well. And they're doing the same again here. As the lap holds up for the midfielder Pereira. The switch is intercepted by back though. And now he can come over halfway. Instead lays it back to Tonali and De Ligt. Bring the experience. Keeping them in possession. Keeping things ticking. It eventually finds its way to the left wing to back. Skins three. He's got three men in the middle. And with his feet 
Bongiorni makes no mistake. Two headers brilliantly saved already, but with his left foot, he thunders it into the side netting. Juventus 1, Real Betis 0. The other game remains goalless. And as it stands, we are going through in second place, despite a very early scare in the Champions League. As Popov's got an outswinging corner for us, in towards Bongiorni. Bashiri, who we mentioned pre-match, heads the ball away. Finds back on the left-hand side. He's got two in the middle. Not so much support this time. And Bongiorni, for the third time in this match, has produced a stunning save out of the goalkeeper. From an almost impossible angle, he guided it towards the back stick. And the keeper, was it a foot he got to it? It was incredible work. Really strong, as Alvarez gives it to Redondo. And as long as it stays 1-0, it only takes one counter-attack. You can see our former club Real Madrid leading. Laos got the goal there. They're on to 15 points, but in second behind Celtic. So we could get a repeat of Celtic in the last 16. And we saw what happened last year when we played them. As Bongiorni in the box for two. I think it's game over now. A well-worked move. Simois got to the byline on the right. And in he delivers for Bongiorni, who makes absolutely no mistake. Now a header would give him the perfect hat-trick. But it's been a dominant display. We have to be so, so pleased. As we reach first half stoppage time, it remains comfortable. We have not conceded a shot on target. We've been utterly dominant. And Bongiorni has had every shot in this match. The two goals and the three stunning saves from the keeper. And at the moment, that is what separates the sides. As tonali has got a chance to cross from the right. Into the back post. Garcia wins the header. The lap gets on the end of it, does he? No. Shep Roma intercepts. Finds Balde, who's drifted out wide. Gets into the box now. Delivers for back. It's a good block. Garcia just hoofs it behind. Safety first from him. But a really good display. We have started to look like our best again. And this is what happened against Atalanta in the first game. Against AC Milan for the last half an hour against Inter in the last episode. We just have little spells where we look sublime. And then it all goes wrong for another three or four matches. But we could get Celtic again. It would be a hilarious situation quite frankly. If we went out to them two years in a row with two different elite sides. But with an hour on the clock. This has been a thoroughly professional performance. I'm going to give Popov a rest because he's been so key in the domestic fixtures. Gandara on for him. Balde will be replaced by Ristivajevic. And I'm going to leave the last one five more minutes. 25 to go. It's 2-0 to Juventus. And it's been a really comfortable performance. Still 0-0 in the other one as well. Okay, so Tonali has just dropped into the sixes there in terms of performance. So I'm going to bring Ege on in a holding role. It's not quite as strong, and he's never going to be a deep line playmaker by trade, but he has got a little bit of ability, to be fair. And at the moment, we've done the job pretty comfortably. There's only four minutes left on the clock, and we're coming forward again with Samois on the right. Plays into Gandara, the sub-winger. Back to Samois again, into Bongiorni. Just over his head, he couldn't get anything on it. Falls for back on the left wing, back to Eight Nori. He plays a 1-2 with Ege, in towards Ristivajevic. Headed as far as Eight Nori again, back into the box. Ege to Eight Nori. We're just sort of keeping it on the edge of the box, not finding the opening. It switched to Samoyce in the end. Brilliant ball into back. And it is a second assist of the day for the right wing back. And I have no idea why Febrian is being preferred by the assistant every single game. Our number one is Rui Samoyce. And he's proved it with two assists here. 3-0 on the night to Juventus. I think it finished 0-0 in Germany. And that means we're through by two clear points. And it's a brilliant way to end a very difficult group stage campaign. So now, after the weekend's fixture, we'll hopefully see who we've got in the last 16. Fingers crossed it won't be a Celtic shock again. We're back for our game with two days to go to the Champions League draw. And the more I look at this, the more I think we might have done quite well in finishing second. Now I know there's a couple of standouts. Barcelona are a very big one. Borussia Dortmund are an excellent one, but in their group so are City. However, if we look at some of the other groups, Lazio and Feyenoord is not the strongest. They both knocked out PSG. But more importantly, Ajax got top spot above Liverpool in their group. Hertha Berlin and Atalanta, I would argue, a similar level opposition. Hertha Berlin went with six wins. And Chelsea have finished second to Atletico Madrid, who we saw weren't at their very best when we were at Real Madrid last year. Celtic above Real Madrid as well, our former club. I actually think finishing second might be a blessing in disguise, but we'll come back to that in a moment. We've got Udinese first and we've got to recover now. We've only had three days since the last game. Who's going to be fit? There's people with a heavy match load, but everyone looks all right. We've got a week off after this, so I think we go first 11. Eight Nori keeps his place. He was brilliant. 
the other five subs can come back into the squad and this is absolutely vital we're in the title race we're just about in charge but we've got to keep doing that any more of these silly draws and we could be in a spot of bother let's go and find out if we can get the win well no recognizable names in that Udinese team and let me know in the comments if I'm missing any. Maybe Gasparini in goal, actually. I think he's real. Axel Twanzebi on the bench. There's another one who will be very experienced now. But it is a squad we should be beating. They've been a mid-table side for a couple of years. And we'd like to think, at our best, we can win these games. If we don't, we've got to start asking questions about the title. We had heartbreak last year at Real Madrid. And we don't want it again at Juventus. Because after they won Syria and the Champions League last year, we'll be sacked if we win neither. Though a corner's come in. Oh, we've hit the post. Bongiorni in the second minute. Back post header. Off the outside of the woodwork and behind for another corner by the defender. Popov takes it. An out swinger. Tenali just loses out. But another one of those threatening starts without the final product. Tenali with a free kick from the left. It's been a blistering start here. And Sana Balde heads in. We've made the most of set pieces. We've been utterly dominant in terms of territory. And after one was just a post width away from going in. We've had a brilliant start, thanks to our little number 10. He gets into the box, he wins a big header, and he makes it 1-0 to Juventus. Happy days. And we've got a throw-in on the right-hand side again for Simois. Plays into Balde, back to him again, into back. That's what we wanted to see. We are producing our best performances today. Efficient in the first half against Real Betis. Pitch perfect here so far. And every single time we've gone forward, we've looked threatening. We've won a set piece. We've had five corners, six shots. We've dominated the possession. And we're thoroughly deserving of our 2-0 lead. And if we can stay solid defensively, playing before Milan as well, this could put them under a real bit of pressure for the first time this season. And at five minutes to the break, we've doubled our shot count without anything coming back. And at half time, we're going to lead by two. It's a perfect first half display. And that is just what the doctor ordered. We're going to tell the lads to prove a point to keep going in the second half. If we can produce the same as that again, I'll be very happy come the end of this episode. As long as we get a good Champions League draw, that is. And we've got a throw again on the right-hand side with Samois. Another man producing brilliant crosses today again. Shet Roman hits a poor pass, but he gets it back. Goes for a long-distance effort. And he's flicked the outside of the post as well. How many times are we going to hit the woodwork? You can see some of the more experienced legs getting a little bit tired now. Back on the left wing, one of them. Shep Roma in the middle. Popov's not had a great game again after a few really good ones in recent weeks. So with 20 minutes to go, I think we're going to make the changes. Unavar will come on on the left wing. He'll be an inverted winger on attack, which is what he does best. On the right-hand side, it'll be Popov for Gandara. And then in centre midfield, Shep Roma will be replaced by... Ege maybe? Oh, no, Ristovajevic. We'll get the young Serbian. And with 20 to go, we're completely confident. As there is the Serbian substitute. Plays a 1-2 with Samoys, the right back. Into Sana Balde, who opened the score in here. Gets into the box on a post. Gives it back to Simois. And the pressure is now in front of us. There's nine players behind the ball for Udinese. As Aitnori gets to the byline. Oh, it's a horrendous own goal. Into the back post. Gandara just got barged out the way by Correa. He actually found himself unmarked or with no opposition at the back stick. But then slid in and put it into his own net. He should have got the call to say there was no pressure on him. But we're not complaining. It's 3-0 Juve. We didn't really deserve that goal though. As Aitnori heads away a long goal kick to Unavar. Been a real disappointment this year. Firstly in the fact that he's not stayed fit at any stage. But even when he's played, he's largely been really poor. Bongioni shot there straight at the keeper. But yeah, Unifar's the one that's got to improve for me because I'm a little bit concerned about his style of play, his brittleness and his lack of performance. As in they go. Hansen Aaron's in. That's a brilliant strike. Manuel Gasparini with the assist. It went from a straight long goal kick. I mean, we can't afford to concede goals like that. But it was a flying finish. It was a thunderous strike. And it's 3-1. 10 minutes to go. And perhaps game on for a grandstand finish. Having said that, we've almost reached stoppage time now and it has just calmed down again. Experienced players in Tenali and Aitnori just keeping the ball and exchanging possession. To Anana and now De Ligt, probably the four most experienced players in the team and they're just keeping the ball between them. Here's Aitnori yet again, into Balde, the young midfielder. He runs past one man on a post. He's got Aitnori overlapping, instead goes for the back post cross. Gandara loses out in the air. He's cleared downfield as far as Matthias De Ligt, but this is exactly where we want them into stoppage time. Simois, back into his centre-half, to Gandara. 
We've got an overlap from the right back. Gandara turns on the break as though goes alone. Cuts it back to Ristivajevic. And the youngster puts him for 4-1. Just his second goal for the club. I think his first in Syria. But Ristovajevic, a free agent signing in the summer. And what a performance he's been. As we've got another corner now in a final minute of stoppage time. Free kick, sorry, by the byline. Balde puts it into the back post. And Delict heads just over the bar. I'm not sure he scored since we've been at the club. But it doesn't matter. It's a 4-1 victory. The whistle will go any minute. And it's been an absolutely wonderful display from Juventus. Ain't Nori heads away as far as Hanson Aaron, who still has scored the best goal of the game. To De Ridder. Back to Simon on the right-hand side. We don't want them getting a second here. We want to keep our defensive record and our goal difference up. Because it could yet be crucial. Monchu in the middle. He goes back to Batella. And why to Fritas on the right. I wonder if that's the same Monchu we had last year at Burnley in the head coach. As it's out to Simon on the right-hand side. Excuse me for thinking out loud there. But a 4-1 victory. A really confident display. And as a double header, two games in one episode. I think that's the best we've produced this season. So let's skip ahead to get the Champions League draw at the final moment of this episode. And hopefully it can end as a perfect one. We just want a favourable draw to give us a chance. I'll see you in a moment. Well, our perfect weekend and our perfect episode keeps getting better. We are now topped by four points in Syria as Atalanta hold AC Milan at the San Siro. If it still is the San Siro that is in game. What a fabulous performance. Let's see where Milan are playing now while we're at it. Very quick look to their facilities. They are still at the San Siro. And it is an absolutely brilliant result for Atalanta. But now, it could all go very wrong. We, of course, finished second in the group stage. So we're not seeded. But that actually means we avoid Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, Milan and Real Madrid. In the first pot, we could draw Celtic, who put us out with Real Madrid. Ajax, Lazio, our fellow domestic league side. And Atletico Madrid, who we found quite comfortable with Real Madrid last year. So let's get through. The first team out of the hat is Liverpool. We can't be facing them. Second up is Feyenoord. But Lazio are gone already, as are Manchester United. That's a good thing for us. Atlanta next are going to be facing Celtic. So there's our bogey team from last year. But I'm looking at that draw now and thinking Ajax or Atletico, please. Chelsea have drawn Ajax. So now we've got a three-quarter chance of having a very tough game. Manchester City v Atletico Madrid. It's gone wrong right at the death, everyone. Hertha Berlin are giants in this game. Borussia Dortmund are world class. And Barcelona, we know plenty about them. If you haven't, episode 106 will tell you what you need to know. Let's have a look. Milan are out next. They face Dortmund. Real Madrid, Hertha Berlin. Which means Juventus v Barcelona is just about the most mouth-watering last 16 tie you could possibly imagine. I mean, those last four ties. City, Atletico, Milan, Dortmund, Real Madrid, Hertha for Berlin, and then us v Barcelona. Not the way we wanted to end the perfect episode, but it tells you what we're probably going to be showing in a later episode. For now, though, we're going to come back on the 17th of January. We've got Lazio in the Super Cup final. We'll probably show the other cup game against Fiorentina just before it as well. We might have to rotate a little bit to save ourselves for the Super Cup because I want to win trophies and I want to do it quick. So any game where we can do it in one day is a very good one for me. If you did enjoy this episode, though, probably the two best combined performances in a single episode so far here, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 videos from two long-term stories. Let me know what you think of that Champions League draw and our progress now in Syria. And of course, you can find all the key playlists, including some Euro specials up in the eye above and a link to the Twitch channel in the description below. I'd love it if you could give us a follow over there. And hopefully we'll be able to have plenty of fun as the Euros keep progressing. But a big thanks for watching and your support as always. I do greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. A big game in the Italian Super Cup final. Can we get our second trophy of the season? I'll see you next time to find out.